So you're stuck comparing Cursor, Lovable, and a dozen other AI coders. But what if I told you that one of them just killed the competition overnight? And in this video, as a coder with over 20 years of experience myself, I'll give you six reasons why your search is over and why Cursor will be in really big trouble. And to really understand what just happened, you first have to know that Cursor, which is still the most popular AI coder in the world, was the default recommendation until literally just a few hours ago. But this has now changed. Because Windsurf, their main competitor, did something that nobody saw coming and for reasons that you won't believe. So let's jump in. Reason number one. So let's talk about the biggest update straight away. Windsurf finally removed their highly controversial flow action credits, which if you've used Windsurf before, you know exactly what I'm talking about. They had a super complicated system that was super confusing where we, you would get charged for the messages that you send, but then extra charged for all the actions that the AI actually took. All of this is now completely gone. And what this means for you is that you are getting exactly the same package as you would get with Cursor, except you're paying just $15 a month instead of 20, which is 25% cheaper straight away. And even if you go beyond the included pricing and you buy extra credits, they're both identical now with just four cents each. But before you run into the comments, yes, I know. Cursor still gives you these unlimited slow premium requests, but let's be honest, they're basically unusable if you're trying to build anything meaningful. So to 99% of the people, Cursor and Windsurf now offer exactly the same, except Windsurf will give you the same thing for $5 less. Plus, you get the better AI editor, which we'll talk about in just a moment. By the way, my AI coding blueprint still has the $50 early bird discount, but it's ending this Sunday at midnight. It's specifically designed for non-technical founders who want to build profitable apps themselves without all the hassle of managing and hiring developers. If that sounds like you, check out the link in the description below. Now, reason two, and this is highly speculative, but worth knowing because there are serious rumors that OpenAI, the makers of ChatGPT, are in talks to buy Windsor for $3 billion. While nothing is confirmed yet, this could be huge because OpenAI is an extremely well-funded company that would likely invest heavily to make Windsor the absolute best AI editor in the world. We could see deep ChatGPT integrations, maybe even included in the subscription. We don't know exactly what any of this will mean, but because we are in a race for users and adoption, they will not be afraid to burn through millions and millions of dollars to make sure that Windsurf crushes the competition. And here is a little insider tip, because if we are going on a Windsurf plan right now, there's always the chance that whatever happens after the acquisition with their pricing, they might grandfather you in, which might mean that you pay less than others who sign up later. Windsurf has done this before. I personally know someone who's paying way less on a completely unlimited plan. Again, these are complete rumors. There's nothing that we know for certain, but it is something to consider. And then reason number three is about AI memory, or what developers would call token context windows. Until now, this was the biggest reason why some people would recommend Windsurf despite being more expensive than Cursor. Well, until today. In simple terms, Windsurf just remembers more of your project for longer, while Cursor tries to optimize their memory, which often leads to issues. You will notice this immediately when Cursor starts forgetting things that you just mentioned, or parts of your code base that it was literally just looking at. I have no doubt that Windsurf 2 is optimizing their AI memory, but they are, they have a less aggressive approach, if that makes sense. This means that Windsurf generally makes fewer mistakes and remembers more, which leads to better, faster results. And that means you can spend less time running in circles than you would with something like Cursor. Reason number four, and this might be something that you don't know, but if you're currently using Cursor and you want to use Windsurf, but you're afraid that you may not know your way around, they are both built on the same software called Microsoft Visual Studio Code, which is open source, which means that any company can take it, modify it, and then sell it as their own product. And that is exactly what Cursor and Windsurf are doing. The fantastic news for you is that if you currently use Cursor and you're worried about not knowing your way around Windsurf, 
I'll tell you right now, it looks exactly the same. It has the same options, the almost identical user interface, and I promise you'll feel right at home from the first minute. Reason number five, Cursor and Windsurf seem to be actually targeting slightly different people because recently Windsurf introduced app deploys, which is a very cool feature that lets you deploy or publish your apps directly from the editor without jumping through extra hoops. And newsflash, this is included in every plan, even the free one. This clearly shows that they are going after more non-technical founders that are tech curious, who are tired of being limited by tools like Lovable, Bold, or V0 while wanting more control. And funny enough, they also want to pay less. So if you're currently using Lovable and you consider switching, I would skip over Cursor and instead try Windsurf. Reason number six, so Windsurf has the ability to open a project directly in your local browser, which is pretty wild. This means that you can connect your editor to Chrome or Arc, which is what I'm using, and then directly point at elements. Let me show you. So as you see right here, all I did was ask it to open a browser preview of my website, then it ran some commands, and then it's asking, do you want to open it in a preview, which is a tab with an internal browser, which I wouldn't recommend, or you can say open in external browser. And when you click on it, it will just open the page in your local, whatever browser it is you're using with this new element right here, which lets you just hover over everything that you want. And then you can click on something and you will notice that it popped up right here. Now I would be able to say something like change the color, make it bigger, you get what I'm saying. And that unfortunately is something that Cursor doesn't yet natively support. And here's point seven, which I didn't think I would do, but I just remembered that Cursor also charges you two credits for some models. So for example, Claude 3.7 Sonnet Thinking would cost two credits, while Windsurf only takes 1.25 credits, which is significantly cheaper. I don't know why Cursor is insisting on charging so much for these premium model credits, especially if they're thinking models, but Windsurf doesn't do that, and so your monthly credits go even further. With their new pricing model, better AI memory, the potential open AI backing, and features specifically designed for non-technical founders, I genuinely believe that Windsurf is now the best choice for coding with AI on a subscription. But now that you know which tool you should use, you still have to get the most out of it. So watch this video next, where I'll show you exactly what to do next.